This bill is set down for third reading immediately. The Honourable Brooke Van Velden. I move that the Employment Relations Trial Periods Amendment Bill be now read a third time. Mr Speaker, the Employment Relations Trial Period Amendment Bill extends the availability of the 90-day trial periods to all employers, repealing the government's uh, policy that restricted it just to small and medium-sized businesses. Under the current law, only employers with fewer than 20 employees can have the option of a trial period for up to 90 days within their employment agreements. And this government is extending that provision to all employers. That will make a huge difference uh, because larger businesses do, they employ around 72% of all employees. This government has inherited a very bleak economic outlook. It's of utmost importance that we give business certainty and confidence for the new year so that both employees and employers can hit the new year with certainty about the labour market. But importantly, that employers have confidence to give a new employee a fair go. So we're wasting no time in making sure that we have changed the law before Christmas so that both employers and employees can keep their heads above water. It doesn't matter to this government whether a employer has two or 200 employees. Every new employee that's taken on is taken on with risk. It takes time, it takes money, it takes energy. There's a lot of relationship building and both people want that relationship to work. We want an employment environment where people are the right fit for the right job. And we believe as a government that this law will allow for employers to take a chance on more employees. Apart from the cost of the dismissal process, retaining an employee who is a poor fit uh, is not just costly to the business in terms of the dismissal process, but costly in terms of the whole culture of that workplace. Any employee, just one person, can really have a detrimental impact on everybody in that employment uh, process. So we're wanting to make sure that also, when, when it comes to that workplace, um, that we're not seeing companies be less productive than they could be because of a poorly fitting employee. That's because the costs and risks associated with dismissal can lead to a labour market with fewer employment opportunities, especially for those trying to get a foot in the door. And, Mr Speaker, this issue of 90-day trials for small and medium or larger size uh, companies has been well canvassed through Parliament, through the history of this institution. But we have heard from businesses time and time again that expanding the availability of the 90-day trials is one of their top priorities. It will help lift unnecessary regulation. It will help business owners across the New Zealand economy, which will help more job opportunities for employers, which will help employees and help their families and help all of New Zealand. This bill is intended to encourage employers to take on new staff by reducing risks in the hiring process. It's not particularly the case where employees... Sorry, it's getting a bit late. This is particularly the case where employers are considering employing someone that does not tick all the boxes in terms of their skills and experience, but they might have the right attitude. So, Mr Speaker, I commend this bill to the House. Greetings, Mr Speaker. Today, I think we begin the journey to nowhere. Yep. And this being my first contribution to the House, I was thinking, I'm so excited about speaking to the House. I came here thinking, wow, I'm standing for Te Pāti Kākāriki, because we can make a difference. We're going to stand up for workers. We're going to stand up for businesses too. But what have we got? What have we got, Mr Speaker? We've got the reintroduction of these 90-day bills that do nothing for our young people, that, do, that take away 
the aspirations of our young people. These are the people who went out and said, we're about aspirations. We're about a future. A few years ago, they were talking about a brighter future and look at where that got us. Absolutely nowhere. And today, we're back in the same spot we were telling our young people there is no future because you're always going to be on trial. This sounds like your corrections policy. <laughs> you see, Mr Speaker, what we've got to do is stand up for our young people. I used to work at the University of Auckland. We used to say it was New Zealand's premier Great. university. Great. Great university. And where we graduated with my friends here sitting to my left. To my left. Oh, here, the beauty of that, Mr Speaker, to my left. And one of the things we used to do, my role was to go out into predominantly low decile schools and encourage young people to think about the world of work. That beyond school, you'd be able to go to work and earn money and support your families. Eh? But now they're always going to be, according to the minister who spoke last night, he said, well, they might not tick all the boxes. Oh my goodness. Imagine, imagine ticking nine of the 10 boxes and then after 90 days they say, no, 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 get out. We want someone with the 10th. Goodness gracious me, what kind of theory is that? That's not going to help anybody. This is giving our young people, our future, absolutely no assurance whatsoever that there is a future for them in work. You're not giving us the brighter future. This is dark and dim and harsh and horrible. And I encourage you to look in the mirror. And I know you're getting excited. I know you're getting excited. So am I because your contributions are not adding to the future of our young people. In fact, you're stealing our future. The Grinch of Christmas has arrived, eh? The Grinch of Christmas has arrived, and they're all looking at me now thinking, oh, if only, if only I chose to stand for the Green Party rather than where you are today and taking away our hope. Let's see what MB had to say, because you're so driven by evidence, and I can see it, I can see it right now, you're driven by evidence. Let's see what MB says. We consider that the main impacts, and we've heard this before, so I've got to reiterate it, because I don't think people are hearing. Hey, I don't think people are really opening their minds to this discussion. So I'm going to invite you just to pause for a moment. Open your mind. Open your mind. Open your hearts to the young people you're telling today that there's no future in work for them. We consider, says MB, that the main impacts of the 90-day trial policy are perceived insecurity for employees who are on a trial period and reduced costs for employers that choose to dismiss. That choose to dismiss an employee on a trial period. Is this the future you want? Oh, shame. We consider, say MB, we consider, this is the, this is the department you're about to gutter. Yeah, we Mr consider, Collins, um, very liberal use of the word you. You are I speaking your through the chair. Um, I'll, and through the chair to whoever you are addressing. My friends opposing me, consider, consider this. We consider, say MB, and I apologise for that, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Speaker. That smaller, that smaller employers are more likely to benefit from trial periods because they are less able to absorb the costs of a poor match or dismissal. In comparison, larger employers can be equipped to manage any dismissal processes and absorb those costs. We consider that the option to extend trial periods to employers with fewer than 100 employees may lead to greater uncertainty than other options. This is deplorable, Mr Speaker, and it's deplorable because we're taking away people's ability to be able to, to, to negotiate and say, this is what I want. Instead, what we're going to do is create fear, and that's not the future that we want. So I do not commend this because it, it, it is nothing but hopeless and poor and terribly thought through. Thank you, Mr Speaker.